everybody, it's Small G Gay. This is Jack Dempsey's Fight Magazine. I'm recording this the day of the Iowa caucus. I should let everybody know that I will be on the air tonight live on the Blog Talk Radio at 11 o'clock for my wrap-up show about the Iowa caucuses. And I will be live and I will be taking your calls. <clears throat> we may not even know at that time what's going on. I think it's going to be close. I think we're we're looking at uh, a tie, virtual tie. Which position? I will let you know at the end of this vlog. Last night I was very depressed because Newt announced. I've never heard anyone announce this in my life. And I've been... Now, I've been kind of a grassroots activist since the 80s at different times for different candidates, but, you know, different parties. But even when I was a kid, I was, you know, really into politics. And I've been following it all my life. I've never seen anyone say, I'm going to lose tomorrow. Can you think of anybody doing that? And Newt does that last night. Now, that's the thing about Newt, though, that I've noticed. I don't know how good he'd be at poker, but he might be really good for like a democracy republic kind of deal because he's like that Sophia on Golden Girls. No thought goes unspoken with that newt. And, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing that most people wouldn't say. But they put on a like a brave uh, face, like that gutsy, rugged, ruggedly handsome uh, Rick Perry. They they put on a brave face like him. And um, <laughs> but so that's kind of unexpected. So I just took the evening out off. But well, I was still out doing everything, but I wasn't like tweeting for nude all night. So then this morning he wakes up. And he goes on that uh, CBS network program with, uh, he's like a male uh, Andrea Mitchell, what's his name, Bob Schieffer. And he's, you know, he's like the Crypt Keeper, Bob Schieffer. He's been doing, he's been doing news for CBS since my grandmother's era. And, um... He's still, and, I, and I'm old enough to be a grandfather myself at this point. And he's and he's uh, he's there, and uh, they're they're grilling Newt about the negative ads. And Newt just says point blank, "Well, Mitt Romney is a liar. He's a Massachusetts moderate, and he's a liar." And they're like, "Oh, oh, oh my goodness, oh my goodness! I can't believe that you you would just say that." And he says, "Sure, I'll say it. Why would I hide behind an ad?" I'll say it to his face. Man up, Mitt. Mitt's kind of like Queen Elizabeth. Like, in his mind, he thinks he's Queen Elizabeth, and he's just going to sit it out. That's how Queen Elizabeth uh, stayed in power, you know, by just letting her enemies kill each other. Some people could call it a brilliant strategy. Other might call, others might call it a womanly uh, passivity and cowardice. So anyway, I got a lot of lesbians listening to me. Sorry, gals, if I sounded a little sexist there for a minute. So anyway, I thought that rocked big time. Oh, by the way, if this dude thinks if you hear this, but you know, I'm I'm friends again with this dude, and uh, I don't want to I don't want to jinx that uh, that friendship. We've been through a lot together politically, and I do like this dude. I just like having someone with a Z in their name. So anyway, don't set him off. So that was pretty damn funny and pretty darn true. And, you know, um, what's his name? Pinter. Painter. He was saying he was saying on uh, Twitter just now, and, and he's confirming what I'm saying. Do you want to hear my predictions? Do you want to hear my predictions? I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we're going to have – Josh Painter is the one who confirmed what I've been saying the past couple of days. Sorry, Josh. He's really great. He's really good. 
some of these people are just like professional news people. You know, I'm just like a, I'm like a subpar Stephen Colbert, but they're like professional news people, some of these people. They're better. And Painter confirms what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. And, and, and Larry O'Connor also touched on this last night. I think that the Ron Paul thing is a lot of hype. I think it's a lot of polls. The Ron Paul people swarm to polls. They're young. They're online. They're also, I'm sorry, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to avoid stereotypes. A lot of them are on drugs and they're paranoid. And when you have that disassociation because of marijuana, you think that everyone is responding to the TV like a, like a zombie or to polls like a zombie. You can't assume, this is why the left is like it is. You can't assume that that's a reflection of what people actually said. So you have to assume that it's part of a conspiracy and that people will believe the polls and the polls are a way of controlling people. And that's why they pack all of these online polls and they, they troll online and, 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 and post these trolley posts everywhere because they're trying to create an impression that the whole world is for Ron Paul and they're not. They're not. And <clears throat> Ron Paul wins all of these. He won CPAC. It's always the same. Those people in Iowa are not going to buy it. It's also kind of, um, uh, kind of, uh, frankly, I mean, uh, you know, I've been, I've been calling people out wherever I see it. I, Gingrich, I don't agree with what Gingrich said. The people of Iowa are used to negative ads. They know the deal, and this is where I'm going with this. I think poll. I think the Paul. I think Paul is lower than the polls, and I think Gingrich is going to end up in third place. Not so much of what he's done in response, but because I think that Paul is overblown. I do. He always is. And uh, I, I, I don't think those poll numbers are going to, are going to uh, reflect in the actual caucus. We'll see what happens, but that's my theory. And Newt is the one poised. It could be Newt. It could be Perry. I'm thinking it's going to be Newt. I'm thinking it's going to be Newt. Newt is pretty calm. He's he's a pretty calm uh, guy right now, and I don't think um, I don't think that he's going down at all. I think he's maintaining, and I think he's going to strike back. Here's where it's going to get to be a real battle tonight. I think it's going to be a battle between Santorum and Romney. That's where the fight's going to be. It's going to be a fight between Santorum and Romney for first place. Romney still can't get above 25%. The people seem to really be with Santorum. I'd be thrilled if Santorum beat Romney. Um, and uh, I think that, that uh, you know, Romney could still come out ahead. I don't, I don't know, though. I don't know. We'll see. I, don't see. I don't see any momentum for Romney. I just see him maintaining his base of people that want something safe. So, there you have it. Toss up between Romney and Santorum for first and second place. And I'm, 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 I'm thinking Gingrich might pull out a third place out of this, you guys. We'll see. So, anyway, those are some of my predictions. Uh, Donald Trump supporter and Ron and, and Paul Bot, um, Sarah Palin, Sarah Paulin, um, did say something yesterday that I really enjoyed. She, that I didn't even notice the first time out. She said that um, it's time for Michelle Bachman to withdraw from the race and endorse someone else, basically, in a roundabout way. If you could get through all of those if you wills and what have yous. <laughs> She basically said to Michelle Bachman, it's not your time. It's time for you to go. And a lot of people, Ed Morrissey's uh, Hot Air was kind of wondering, was this uh, Palin's little kiss of death to Michelle as payback on the eve of the uh, Iowa primary, telling everyone, oh, she's a loser. It's time for her to go. If so, I almost like Sarah again. Although, frankly, I think her politics are getting very weird. 
speaking of Michelle Botchman, if you didn't hear it, we've been we've been having oodles of fun with it on Twitter all afternoon. Michelle Botchman compared herself to Doctor Doctor Michelle Botchman. Listen to my special. Who is who is my who is uh, Michelle Bachman on the uh, the new Small G Gay show? I think it's the featured episode. Actually, there's a whole there's tons of fun facts about Michelle Bachman in that episode. <laughs> Lots of fun facts, but um, today they did this. Her super pack did this ad. It was kind of like this is Tim Tebow. You like Tim Tebow? Michelle Bachman is just like Tim Tebow. So you like Michelle Bachman as well. It was this really weird thing. It was this really weird kind of positive reinforcement therapy kind of deal. And I started thinking about all of these bizarre moments in the Bachman campaign. And I started to think about what Marcus does for a living. And I'm not talking about the ex therapy, although for some people it is that. But they do that kind of therapy for people with addictions and um, sexual dysfunction, sex addiction, all of that kind of stuff. And I really started to think how she has, and Tammy Bruce talked about this last night and then more today, Tea Party is popular. Well, I'm the center of the Tea Party. I am the Tea Party. Look at me, look at me. I am the Tea Party. Um... It goes on and on every step of the way. They're dressing up like Palin. Um, uh, doing the, um, comparing herself to the Iron Lady, because people were talking about the movie The Iron Lady. The movie that everyone's going to, I am that movie. Um, I'm sure that there's, there's a psychological term for it, but I was thinking about that. And I was also thinking about Chris Matthews. Remember when he was laughing, are you hypnotized? What about her eyes? <laughs> I'm serious. You know darn well that Marcus does hypnotherapy. Have they been trying to do that? Has, has this been a head trip? They seem detached from everybody in a frankly sociopathic way. They don't seem like they're normal people. They seem detached. And then they come out and perform for us, or are they working on us? And that coupled with uh, with Marcus's plans to, you know, realign America morally with his um, campaigns, I'm really wondering if this whole thing was a really flaky head trip. To be continued, I'm out of time. Tune in to the new Small G Gay Show tonight at 11. I'll be there. And you know that I'll say things no one else will because that's what I specialize in. Love to everybody. Fight, fight, fight. Go new. Bye.